<laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. All right, we're here at the Be Better Golf School. You guys know Dr. Scott. And this is Rich. Rich is a, coming in from San Francisco. So uh, what's your handicap, Rich? Five. Five. So uh, five, I, I, from when the, what I've seen, he could probably go even lower because he's a really good player. And uh, so, Rich, I'm going to give you this for, for just a minute. Just recap with us, with Dr. Scott, what you were working on. Because yesterday was irons, and today, uh, day two, we're doing driver. So yesterday I found that I lost a lot of power by not staying on the inside of my right knee and right foot. I was sort of sliding outside yep. and couldn't get back. And then Dr. Scott looked at the swing, thought it was a little too flat, said for my body type and the way I play, just bring it up and be a little bit more upright. Yep. And then I was able to release the club a lot better with a better trajectory. Scott, can, can you just show us, because this is something new on the channel, what are the combos that go with like a higher hand or lower hand? Because yeah, I'd have to find... A, a common intervention now in yeah, this school that wasn't before. Yeah, th that's come recently. I'd have to find his old swing and I'll do that in a second. But um, So he tested to be a right leg dominant player. A right leg dominant player needs to get a significant amount of pressure into your trail side, which you were, and then needs to push horizontally and go back to the other way. And that horizontal force is located in the frontal plane, which is kind of more like this. And so we want to be a little bit more Jim Furyk and a little less Matt Kuchar if we're a horizontal pusher, because that just gives the force to the club in the plane that the club's in, right? If we get the club back here and we push horizontally, it's just not a good match. Oh, I see. Okay. So we want the club to be in the frontal plane if we're good at frontal plane push, or that's where our lower body works. So, and for a frontal plane pusher, it's really bad to get to the outside of the right foot. Well, that's bad for anyone, but if you get to the outside of the right foot, it's going to be hard to go back. So my analogy is always, if you're covering me in football, I'm the receiver and I make a move to this side and I get to the outside of that foot. If I go back this way, you got no chance. And so keeping him on the inside and then getting that club a little higher just matched up with what he was already doing. He's a really good player. He was already matched up pretty well. He was getting a good pressure shift off of it. Um, and when he tested to be right leg dominant, we, uh, we kind of went with it and okay. got him moving more horizontal. So and go just, down the line, Mike. And, and Rich, just show us before and after on your, on your uh, top of back swing position. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. before what it looked like. Oh, okay. Yeah, really tight. And now after. Okay. Yeah. So it's about like three inches. It feels like a mile. Yeah. yeah. And the difference was I just said reach the club for the sky more than that wall. And so it, for him, yeah, it feels like a mile. It's a small difference, but it just puts the club in line with his forces a lot better. Right. Okay. So, the, uh, so now you guys just do your thing. Go for it. Back Hit a few. Yeah, hit a few. We'll get uh, get kind of a baseline here and see what's going on. That's the shot, Scott. I was seeing him hit uh, a little better than that, actually, but but blocked and just really solid. Okay. So with, with a lateral player like you, um, I like to move the ball forward like as much as feels comfortable because okay. then that gives you incentive to go get it. There it is. Yeah, really good. There you go. So that'll take away the blocky one, I think. You just get the ball forward. The first three were, a hundred, or the first two were 100 miles an hour, and then just moving the ball forward puts you up to 103. Um, so it, to me, that just gives you incentive to push a little longer horizontally and okay. get to it. And that was dead straight. Give me one more. I missed that one. I was a little late on the, on the push button. Hit, hitting them solid though. Yeah. yeah it's not like good. these are misses. One of the things that Scott said is get that right foot back a little bit more for stability. Yeah. So if your normal, yeah. you know, shoulders, so to take it back an inch. Kickstand on the right foot. Nice. That was great. And then, the, the, I mean, the only other thing that I would add, which has helped me a lot, because I'm similar to you, I'm a very right leg dominant player, is I've started to Kyle Berkshire it a bit before I hit which if you want to ramp, ramp up some speed, like you talked about the trigger, that'd be your trigger. So yeah. you, 
Why? So you can push harder off the right leg? It just, it just yeah, activates that right leg a little more. And what I'm actually doing in my swing, which yeah, stand over, stand in front of you, uh, like what you said you did there, you widened it at setup. My little cue that I'm using now, if I get ready, and I go, so right before I hit it, I take a little step to the right. I just feel like that engages that right, like it gets me pushing off of it. Show us that one more time, Scott. So right before you hit it, you do what? Um, so watch my right foot. It's all set up to hit it. And I'll go. Oh yeah, and just like a, a little two inch step. A little yeah. two inch step. Cause I feel like that just boom gets me. Cause your whole point of a horizontal force person is to push this way and get you going that way. And if you take a step, like if I was gonna be an athlete and go that way, I'd probably do that, right? Yeah. I'd go go that way. So that's kind of what I've added into my golf swing. It's just, that makes me a little more dynamic. And but then if you do that, you gotta have good break, breaks to stop you side, from yeah. going horizontally. Yeah, yeah. totally. Okay. His are really good. Okay. And your brace can be one of two things. When you start going this way, your brakes could be vertical or they could be like horizontal brakes. Because I've found some people just go vertical to brake. It's the same thing, right? If I'm going this way, you just end up going up. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's a braking mechanism. Yeah. So. Okay. You want to add a little Berkshire, see what happens? Hell yeah. So all I want you to do when you set up is just kind of rock back and forth. As soon as your right foot hits the ground, take the club away. So balls a little further forward. And give me a little Berkshire. What a great ball. It's hard to time it, it up. Fine. <laughs> I did I know, it. I can see the wheels oh, spinning there. There you go. That's good. That's good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Good. So we started at 100. Yeah, thanks. We gained so five just, miles an let's hour. Let's just recap a little bit. Yeah, so Rich started at 100 today and then went to 105. Yeah. So he's almost touching 150 ball speed. And uh, yeah, that's really good. If you're interested in doing this yourself, uh, go to uh, the link in the description below. We'll have information about when we're doing it again. Bye. Super exciting announcement that we are going to be having a Be Better Golf School coming up with Dr. Scott and Drew Cooper, who's been on the channel before, who is like one of the best drivers of the golf ball, really, really smart about how to move your body and get stronger and faster and more efficient. And Dr. Scott will be there, I'll be there, Drew will be there, and we're gonna have a small, elite Be Better Golf School at the Grand in San Diego on December 11th and 12th, so come out and join us. I really love doing these schools with Dr. Scott because when you have the swing catalyst there and somebody really knows how to run it, you get insane before and afters. Like before and afters I haven't seen like anywhere before. Brandon got, I don't know, 60 yards or something, but he was a player that has only been playing for like two years. So you can get those kind of gains there. But our other campers got like 45 was like very normal. When you switch from going from the pattern that you've done before to a pattern that's more in line with how your body moves. Like the gains are can be really, really extreme. So the feedback from the Dr. Scott schools have been really great. So sign up over at bebettergolf.net slash school or send me an email, contact bebettergolf at gmail.com and we'll get you set up and start working immediately even before the school. Okay, talk to you soon.